This video is going to be a little different from usual because instead of doing a painting demo for you, I'm going to tell you a story. The story is about two early paintings by Andy Warhol made during his student days. I'm going to have my friend James Warhola, who's posed for a lot of my paintings, tell about his own uncle. And then after this, I want to talk to you about how gatekeepers fit into this story. The most amazing thing about this painting called Nose Picker is that my uncle, Andy Warhol, did it when he was a student in Pittsburgh. It caused outrage. It caused, caused uh, controversy, a bit of notoriety. Uh, and it was Andy's really uh, first uh, uh, experience at that. And I think it left an important, uh, uh, left an important impression on him at what art can do. The way the story goes. Of course, my uncle, uh, he was going to school at Carnegie Tech. This is, uh, he started in 1945, and he graduated in 1949. And uh, he was uh, working on his projects, uh, his pa later paintings in, uh, for, for school. And, um, of course, working at home with a bunch of kids, which were my brothers and sisters, um, what perturbed him the most was that they were picking their nose a lot. And he would complain to my father, Paul, how come you can't get them to stop? They're, they're picking their nose. It's bad. Um, my, uh, my dad said, well, kids, that's what they do. They pick their nose. But anyway, my, my uncle used that situation and adapted it to a self-portrait of his. Uh, it shows him with his finger stuck up his nose. Um, we call it nose picker, one, because he had done two of them. He decided to show his painting at the Associated Artists of Pittsburgh. <clears throat> It's a very prestigious show where some students get to enter their work, but as well as a lot of professors who were teaching there at Carnegie Tech. Um, he entered the show, and he named this painting, The Broad Gave Me My Face, But I Can Pick My Own Nose. Uh, the title is as outrageous as the painting. And he knew he'd probably get a reaction. Well, he didn't really, he, he was hoping it get accepted, of course, but it got rejected. Uh, George Gross... One of the judges just loved it. But uh, John Jones, uh, who was a traditionalist, he absolutely thought it was repulsive and, and just insulting to the art world. So uh, he won, and they didn't show the painting. They uh, returned it. Uh, my uncle, he didn't uh, take that uh, as a big defeat. He decided that he would rename the painting and enter it in his senior class show at the Arts and Crafts Center of Pittsburgh. And that's what he did. He renamed it, Why Pick on Me? Kind of thinking that maybe uh, they were picking on him by rejecting his painting the first time. So he, he had a play on words and he, he had a bit of a humorous aspect to it. Um, and, uh, but the interesting thing is, is uh, People who wanted, to, they, people flocked to this particular show to see this painting. It, it actually had uh, caused some notoriety and uh, a bit of scandal, and it was considered an outlaw painting, which is kind of uh, amazing. I mean, uh, what art uh, can cause that today? Well, I think my uncle took that as a, a clue that uh, art can have an effect like that. And lo and behold, 12 years later, he did the soup can show. And, uh, of course, it had the same reaction. People thought it was outrageous that, that somebody's painting can, uh, pictures of soup cans. Um, I know that uh, uh, it's often been written, and a lot of people, uh, a lot of cri critics really hated him for it. So I think it, it was a way of, uh, of uh, getting a taste of fame. Uh, at an early age. This painting came into our family because when uh, a few weeks later Andy left for New York and uh, he left all his art there at 3252 Dawson Street in Oakland, Pittsburgh. And um, uh, my father, uh, who had great intuition, he, he knew the, these paintings. Uh, this and several others were done by a hand of a genius. So he saved it. And he, uh, he actually uh, asked Andy if he wanted them back, and Andy said, just do what you want with them. And uh, they've been in the family for over 70 years. 
Now, the other painting in the show uh, that will be uh, auctioned off on November 15th is uh, the painting called Living Room. And again, it's, it's one of the pieces from his college days. And it, and it was called, the, uh, the project that he'd done it for it was called the Oakland Project. And uh, of course, he was supposed to invent uh, a situation and invent an environment and uh, a family that would be, you know, living in a particular space. But instead, he uh, broke the rules a little and he used his own house and his own situation. So it was very autobiographical. It shows a, a scene of, uh, of a living space in a living room and it shows little details and you can extract a lot of what, who the family is by the details in this picture. There's a crucifix on the, on the uh, uh, mantle. There's rumpled clothing and, and uh, you know, the drapes are kind of uh, crooked and uh, um, doilies are out of place. It just looks like a family of, of kids maybe uh, rumpled everything up. Anyway, uh, it's a good example of, uh, and a good example of my uncle's ability uh, to uh, do something beautiful. Now, the thing about gatekeepers, in Andy Warhol's day, 70 years ago, you had to contend with gatekeepers, whether they be editors of magazines, gallerists, uh, critics, or judges in contests. All those roles still exist, and there still are gatekeepers in this world. But you can get a book published, you can make your own movie, and you can get your art even sold directly to collectors quite easily using the internet. A lot of artists are doing that. But I think another thing this story tells is about the importance of being a little outrageous. Whether you do something in the style of Andy Warhol or something in your own style, if you shake people up a little bit, you're much more likely to go viral, you're much more likely to get noticed. So walking that delicate balance with the public, with fellow artists, and also with the critics and the other gatekeepers is something that we can all learn from this story. Thank you, James. Okay, thanks for watching. You might want to check out my website or subscribe to my channel. And then here's a playlist with more good stuff and a video that continues the story. So check them out and share with your friends.